Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel and today we are going to start with a new subject called theory of computation and from that the finite automata is the topic that we are going to cover. Moving ahead, whatever the contents we are going to cover that are displayed, introduction to finite automata, how the finite automata is working, then what are the basic concepts related to those automata like symbols, strings, language, clean closure and uh, whatever the types of finite automata. Let's see what is the finite automata first. So the finite automata or uh, we also call them as a FSM that is finite state machine. It can be thought of in several restricted model of computer. Every computer has the several CPU. It executes a program stored in the memory and this program normally accepts some input and delivered some process result to user. So here the word automation is stands for uh, automata it stands for the automation, a system where energy and the informations are transferred or it can be get used for performing some functions without direct involvement of a man or a human is called as a automation. So the finite automata uh, have the another word as an FSM which is finite state machine. Then collectively we can say the finite state machine is a mathematical model for actual physical process by considering the possible inputs on which this machine can work. So here uh, we can say that uh, 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 we can analyze the strength and the weakness as well and the finite automata uh, is get used here for a several common types of computer uh, algorithms and some of them are mentioned like a design of digital circuits, string matching, lexical analyzer of typical compiler and etc. If we say the working of finite automata, so here we can consider an example of T flip-flop. So here it is the T flip-flop. Uh, we are considering this T flip-flop as shown in a figure and a T flip-flop has a one input denoted by T, two outputs that is denoted as a Q or a Q dash. It has the two distinct states defined by the logical value of Q. So the flip-flop is in the Q0 state here where, when the Q is equal to 0 and it will be in the Q1 state here whenever the Q is equal to 1. So we can simply say here a value 1 applied to its input changes its state from that uh, it changes its state from Q0 to Q1 or from Q1 to Q0. So this is the way T flip-flop is working and we can relate them with the finite automata as its condition is changing according to input. Uh, then moving forward, what are the basic concepts are related to this uh, uh, finite automata that we should know uh, in advance that what is the meaning of alphabet, what is the string languages and the closures. So let's move ahead with the first uh, basic concept or an important term called as alphabet. An alphabet, we can say it is the finite non-empty set of symbol and the representation of this symbol is done by these summation uh, symbol. So here we can see the summation is used to denote the alphabets over here. So conventionally, the symbol summation that we can uh, use to represent the alphabets and here are the uh, examples or common alphabets that we are using. Like if we take the alphabet 0, 1, so we can call them as a binary alphabet. They are representing the binary numbers. Then uh, capital A to Z, then they are a set of upper letter. The same way if we take the small a, a, B, C to Z, then they will be the set of lower letters. If we are taking uh, the summation of 0, 1 to up to the 9 numbers, so they, they are representing the decimal numbers. The same way octal alphabets, we can have the hexadecimal alphabets we can have. So this is all about the alphabet that we are going to use while we are designing the string whatever uh, which kind of input are a finite automata is going to have likewise for the concept we require the alphabet then next comes the string what we can uh, say that the string is finite sequence of symbol from those alphabet that we have seen right now and another name for the string is also called word word is can be considered as a string so it will be a finite sequence of symbol from the alphabet uh, for example, if we consider the alphabet binary 0 and 1, so from that we can generate any string like this. So the, this is what the finite sequence of symbols from our binary alphabet and that is nothing but it is representing the string, the string which is made up from the binary alphabets. If we take 
from the decimal alphabets if we are making a string then it will be like this or uh, we, we are calling them as a decimal string so this is nothing but the string now uh, with the string if uh, if we are saying that a string is doesn't contain any kind of symbol at all so we can call such a string as an empty string and their uh, representation is done by using the epsilon symbol so epsilon is a special symbol which is used here to represent the empty string as we can represent the empty string, likewise, we can also calculate the length of the string here. So to calculate the length of the string, that is what the number of position for, for, for symbols that string is containing. So we can say the length of the string is nothing but uh, that mod of W, which is uh, representing the length of the string W. And it simply calculates the number of positions over there. So if we consider the same string that a binary string previously seen, so here the number of uh, symbols are nothing but the seven. So the length of the string is uh, length of the binary string is seven. The same way, if you want to calculate the length of a uh, empty string, or we can say the length of epsilon, that is the string not containing symbol at all. So here we can represent such a string as an mod of epsilon is equal to zero, zero uh, because there is no symbols at all. So we can consider this as a zero. So here we have done with the string introduction moving forward towards the language then what the language represents a subset of a string over an alphabet summation is called as a language so now here we are going to see both of the concept that previously seen string as well as alpha, alphabet so the subset of all those strings over an alphabet that we have selected whether it will be a decimal binary etc etc so it it becomes a language what exactly it means, we'll see the example here. If we are saying the L1 is one language, which is made up of W, W is nothing but string. And that string is made up of some binary alphabets. And this star is representing right now here a closure. Closure means it is the combination of zeros and ones. So we are going to see this in detail later. Uh, so here the string is made up of binary alphabet, which is the combination of zeros and ones, such that w has an equal number of zeros and ones so here the condition is that your string should have the equal number of zeros and one doesn't matter whatever the length is there it is made up of combination of zeros and one but the condition is that the w should have the equal number of zeros and ones so uh, we can consider this language l1 over the alphabets binary alphabets having the equal number of zeros and ones and let's create such a string so very first it will contain the epsilon no uh, string, no symbols are there. It means there are equal number of zeros and equal number of ones. That is zero number of zeros and zero number of ones, which is the epsilon. One time one, one time zero, zero one or one zero, twice zero, twice one. So there are the four combination of such a thing, twice zero, twice one. So likewise, we can have the number of uh, different string. There is no matter of length. Length is not mentioned. So we can have dot 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 means we can create the number of possible strings from this 0 1 closure. So here this is representation of language L1 which is the example of this binary number having the equal number of zeros and ones. Then whatever this asterisk symbol or star symbol we have seen now we are going to see the meaning of this. So let's move ahead with the clean closure and what it says that given an alphabet summation the clean closure of a language or a summation is given by for example uh, uh, my alphabets is representing by this summation so if i want to take the closure of that so we have to say that this zero times that alphabet union one time of that alphabet union twice times that alphabet and it will move ahead so here it, it is going to be like this uh, epsilon it is a zero times the alphabet we have not taken that alphabet at all and that's why it is represented as a empty string epsilon then one time we have to take that alphabet that is the string string of length one then string of length two and likewise so here is the example we can take it multiple time uh, including epsilon x double x triple x likewise so here it is the clean closure which is represented by the asterisk symbol and that we have we are providing towards the uh, alphabets now the last topic for today's session that what are the types of finite automata so basically we are going to start from here that what is the uh, uh, type of finite automata and uh, how to find out that different FS for the given problem statement. So there are the two types that is the deterministic finite automata 
and the non-deterministic finite automata. Now, what is the deterministic finite automata or DFA? DFA stands for the DFA, deterministic finite automata. So, the word deterministic refers the fact that the transition determines there is only one state to the machine which an automation can transist from current state on each input. It means that we can easily determine the transition that where exactly it is going for a current input from current state to another state. As we can determine it, then therefore the word deterministic is here. Then what is the finite? The word finite implies that the number of states are finite. So whatever the uh, from initial to final state we are moving, that number of states, uh, states are going to be a finite. So here is the word deterministic, means the transition we can determine easily that from which state to another state, the current state is moving with the current input symbol that is the deterministic finite means the number of states are going to be finite and we have already seen the meaning of automata that is what uh, without direct involvement of a human it stands for the automata so this is what the dfa we are going to see the examples on this in the next session then uh, what is the meaning of nfa then so it stands for the non-deterministic finite automata here the word non-deterministic means the finite automata can reside in a multiple state at the same time. Means we cannot easily determine that uh, a current machine is uh, transist from current state to which state on the current input symbol. So there are the number of options are available that for an input 0 it is moving to 2 or 3 different states. So we cannot easily determine and that's why the word stands here is a non-deterministic. Again, the meaning of finite remains same. The word finite implies that the number of states are finite. Automata remains same. Only the meaning of non-deterministic is that this uh, particular automata can reside in a multiple state at the same time. And that's why we cannot easily determine. And the name is non-deterministic here. So here we have finished with our today's introduction to finite automata. In the next session, we'll have the introduction to DFA in detail. And we are going to see the lots of example on that. Thank you so much.